In the small northern Alberta hamlet of Fort Vermilion, the community is uniting over fears for its future. Government of Alberta's Income and Caribou Range Management Plans are proposing to convert 1.6 million hectares of the region's land base into protected parks, part of a broader federal plan to reach a 65% undisturbed habitat to recover the species. Chair of the Northwest Species at Risk Committee, Lisa Wardley, representing six northwestern Alberta municipalities and 30,000 people, says the plan could sterilize the region's resources and be devastating to not only its economy, but also future generations. President of the local 1080 Trappers Association, Lyle Duperin, bluntly stated, we're the species at risk now. Which will affect all of our infrastructure, our hospitals, our roads, our schools, our grocery stores. And there's absolutely no basis for doing it. NWSAR is projecting major hits to municipal tax revenues, approximately 15% in McKenzie County, 19% in County of Northern Lights, and 25% in Clear Hills County. But the total costs remain unknown. The group was gathering petitions asking Government of Alberta to conduct a thorough socioeconomic impact study before finalizing any range plans. Like Duperin and many of the region's land users, 37-year retired fish and wildlife officer and fellow trapper Owen Sabiston says the province's caribou plan is not designed to protect the species. I mean, when, when we say recovery to the normal Albertan, that's going to mean that's going to mean that, well, our, our caribou are in trouble. We've obviously lost a lot, and so we, now we have to bring them back up to a certain level. The problem is that our, we don't really have a baseline. Now, our statistics go back, I mean, uh, I've seen reports in 1985, they were calling our caribou threatened. But having said that, they also admit that their methods of surveying caribou are were very limited in those days. I mean, caribou to try to survey them like you would moose, elk, and deer are, is not the same. They're almost invisible from the air. Well, as far as I can tell and from the science that we've been given, they have absolutely no reason to think that the caribou in this region need recovery. And all of the science that we've seen has completely got a bunch of holes in it which shows us that actually most of our caribou populations are on the rise. They don't really have a caribou population problem here. So there's all kinds of impacts that we don't understand. The, uh, the, the hunting part of it, uh, you know, like people go up and, and hunt. There's a lot of people that in this area, there's a lot of Métis, a lot of Aboriginal people. We, we hunt, a lot of us live uh, a lot on wild meat. And that's going to affect it because if you can't get into those traditional areas, you've got to go find somewhere else, then the competition gets more in those other areas. So, you know, there's only the, the less of a land base you have, the more concentration you have of certain things that you're doing. The range plans follow a report written in June 2016 by Eric Denhoff, setting Alberta on the path to caribou recovery, which falsely claimed that the region's stakeholders were consulted throughout the process. What I would tell people is that don't, don't start thinking that because you don't see caribou and that, uh, that you're not familiar with the animal, that the first time you hear that we have a recovery plan, that, uh-oh, we've got a problem with caribou. Maybe you need to talk to the local people, uh, not only scientists, but the local people that see caribou in their travels when they're out working and everything else. You know, uh, you, you can't always take reports on face value. You have to dig into it a bit. Reporting for Liberty Multimedia, I'm Matt Marconi.